So, oh, my favorite student, good old M. Number one, mark your own, here we go. That looks like the equation that I'm going to use is VF equals VI plus AT. If by the end of this week, you still are having trouble finding the original equation, then you want to take some steps and come in for tutorials and, and, and flex blocks next week. Generally, I find this is the week where it starts to click for the vast majority of my kids, my students. So if you're still having a bit of trouble with this, don't panic yet. But if Friday you're still having trouble with this, then we'll say, yeah, come in and I can walk you through some more examples and give you some tricks of the trade and whatnot, okay? I want to get the T by itself. Well, the VF is going to drop down like a domino. I would minus the VI. I would divide the A. T equals that. Then I would plug in the numbers. It's going to be 24.6 minus 3.2, all divided by 2.5. Time is the only variable, the only thing that we're finding in this unit that will always be positive. So if you ever get a negative time, you have done something wonky. Check your signs or check how you typed it into your calculator. Is it a fraction? Did you put brackets around the top, brackets around the bottom if necessary? Anyways, here, this is a fraction, more than one thing on the top, so brackets around the top. 24.6 minus 3.2 divided by, I don't need brackets around the bottom. Do you all get 8.56? By the way, technically, how many sig figs should I go to here? I think two, because I'm dividing by 2.5, which is two sig figs. So technically 8.6, but since it ends quite nicely, I'm gonna go 8.56. And the units would be seconds. If you got that two out of two, otherwise I would give you a half mark for writing down the original equation, a half mark for rewriting it, a half mark for plugging in the numbers, and a half mark for the answer. The risk you're taking is if all you do is write down the answer is I can't give you part marks if you make a mistake. Now, some of you are at the stage where you don't need to write down the original since it's on your green sheet, Isabella. You're able to just look at it, think about it for a little bit and go, oh, I can I can rewrite this in a different form. If you are at that stage, then what? if you got to this line here, I would give you one whole mark. I would say you must have found the correct equation in order to get this line correct. But this is how I'll mark all of the rest of these questions. I'm not going to do the half mark breakdown anymore, Mila. And this is on your test. Almost always, each question will be worth two marks. If it's worth more than two marks, that's your hint that you're probably going to have to find something in order to find something. It means it's a multi-step question. But if it's two marks, kind of plug and chuggish, I just want to be able to give you lots of part marks. Okay. Number two. D equals VIT plus a half A t squared. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier, Connor, that when I make a t, a lowercase t, I always put the little curl on it right there. And the reason is that right there. Too often I've looked back at my work and I've gone d equals vi plus plus. What? Oh, no, it's a t. So habits to develop, you don't have to. But if you're wondering why I always put the little curly q on my letter t, uh, it's because of that t and a plus right there. What am I trying to get by itself? D, hey, it already is. So if the equation that you're using has already got the D by itself, then you get one whole mark, half mark for finding the equation and half mark for cluing in. I've already got it by itself. I'm gonna to go to the plug and chug stage. D is gonna be, I guess we started out going backwards for 19 seconds, but we accelerated forwards so even though we started out going backwards, you know, we might have ended up in front of where we started. If I get a negative D, we ended up behind where we started from. If I get a positive displacement, we ended up in front of where we started from. I think I'm going to end up in front of where we started from. Negative 8.5 times 19 plus 0.5 times 2.5 times 19. Don't forget my X squared button. You get 289.75. I would give you full marks if you wrote that. I'm going to go to three sig figs and call it, well, I guess 290, technically. 
units, meters. So again, one half mark for the original equation, a free half mark because you didn't need to rewrite it. So really one mark for the original equation, half mark for the numbers, and half mark for the answer. If I make a mistake, please let me know, by the way. Number three. D equals, same equation, VIT plus one-half AT squared. But this time I'm getting the VI by itself. Okay, the D is going to drop down like a domino. I would subtract the 0.5 AT squared over. I would divide the T. That equals VI. I noticed that D is negative, so this means, Ethan, we ended up 70 meters behind where we started from. Negative. Or below where we started from if we're talking vertical directions, but usually I assume we're in a car or something like that. Okay. It's going to be negative 70. Take away 0.5. Ooh, we're also accelerating backwards because the acceleration is negative. All over 24. Is this a fraction? Yep. More than one thing on the top. Brackets. Negative 70 minus 0.5 times negative 4.8 times 24 x squared button. Negative 70 didn't show up. Good catch. Uh, divided by 24. Did I make any other mistakes? I don't think so. You get 54.683. I'll go 54.7. Yep. Meters per second. If you're imagining what happened, we started out going forwards, but which way are we accelerating, Josh? What's the negative mean? Which way are we accelerating? So we started out going forwards. We're slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, because we're accelerating backwards. We must have come to a stop for a split second and then started going backwards and accelerating backwards. And I guess after 24 seconds, we ended up 70 meters behind from where we started from. Okay. Number four. Going to use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Cool. Armand, what am I trying to get by itself? Yes. It is. Or is it? What do I really have technically by itself? The VF squared. How do I get rid of a squared? Square root. And in terms of the amount of work that you show, I'm fine if you just do that. In fact, I'm fine if you don't even put the squared on in the first place and you just write VF equals big square root of blah, 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 blah. So plug and chug, VF is going to be the square root of 28 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 152. For complicated square roots, some of you with the fancy schmancy Casios, especially the ones that have the two-line display mat, you can probably hit your square root button. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Why am I staring at you? Of course. Put it away. Thank you. Um, you can use your square root button. I think it does like a little indentation and extends the square root bar, like the way I've handwritten it. And if that works for you, Caleb, go ahead. But on most of the older calculators, I find it easier to type what's inside the square root first. What I really should have done is run over there with three sets of dice and started saying, add, 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 because you were distracted learning, right? Don't think that doesn't make a difference. Do you get 61.3? Is that right, folks? See people nodding? Uh, meters per second. Two marks. There is a problem with this equation that we're going to run into. So... 61.3 times 61.3. If I go 61.3449 squared, I get what was inside the square root, 3763.2. There's another possible answer that would have worked, though. Does anybody know? VF could have been negative. The weakness with this equation is, much like your futures, it has no sense of direction. It doesn't know whether you're positive or negative. 
it, your calculator always assumes you want the positive answer, there will be some questions in your future where we know that we're going backwards at the end and we know it for a fact and we'll have to add the negative ourselves because our calculator will always give us a positive square root. So a bit of a problem that we'll have to run into later. Anyways, you've all turned the page because you didn't care. Fair enough. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. D is going to be Vf squared minus Vi squared all over 2A. Oh, I'm finding A, Mr. Duick, not D. Sheesh. Thankfully, that's an easy fix because they almost look the same. They're very symmetrical because they're right next to the same two variables. I did notice, William, that I'm slowing down, and so I said, I think A is going to be negative. I just happened to notice that V final was smaller than V initial. So it's going to be 22 squared minus 40 squared all over 2 times 96. Brackets around the top. Oh, typo. Brackets around the bottom. And I ended up with negative 5.81. 5, but I went to 3 sig figs. The negative didn't surprise me. It comforted me. I probably did this right. A few more were done. Three more and we're done, I think. I like number six. I like number six. I like number six. Number six is a nice question. Well, duh. It's on a quiz, Mr. Duick. So we're already... Um, you're probably going to see that somewhere else in the future. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Mila, what's tricky about this one is the fact that there's a t squared and a t. And you can't get them by themselves. You're going to, who are my grade 12s in this? You are, right? And you are, so you remember the quadratic formula. So spoiler alert, you're going to this year, whether you're in FOM math or uh, whether you're in, in pre-calc math, learn an entirely new approach to solving equations when there's an x and an x squared. In fact, what if there's an x, an x squared and an x cubed? You'll learn an entirely new approach. Right now, you don't know it. So I have to either make a vi zero, which I did in this case, or I have to make a zero. If a was zero, don't write this down, the equation would look like this, d equals vt. That's the distracted driving lab equation that I gave you. It was really d equals vit plus a half at squared, mm -hmm. but I didn't let you step on the brakes or step on the gas. And so since a was zero, that whole second term vanished. I just didn't want to throw all that out at you during that lab. But technically, we were using this equation, just a modified version. We can do this because vi is zero. And so, Mark, what I get is a special subcase. I get D equals A T squared over 2. Mr. Duick, it's a half A T squared. Look up fine. If you want to put the 1 there to make it a 1 half, you can. But Diego, is that 1 going to make any difference on the top there? Some of you don't like fractions, though. I get it. And so some of you might have written D equals 0.5 A T squared. Same difference. I'm fine with that. Point being, I can get the t by itself. In the first version of the equation, the d would drop down like a domino. I would times the 2 over, divide the a, and that would give me a t squared. Kyle, how do I get rid of a squared? I would get that. t equals the square root of 2 times d over a. If you use the second version of the equation, you'll get the square root of d over 0.5 a. Those are mathematically equivalent. I don't care, Connor, which one you use. I like the first one. 2 times 240 divided by 10. Oh, I can almost do this in my head. It's going to be a little less than 7, I think. Uh, 2 times 240 divided, because it's going to be a square root of 48, is it not? Yeah. Square root of 49 is 7, so it's like 6.8, 6.9, something like that, right? 6.93 units, it's a time, seconds. This particular version 
Alex, finding T when VI is zero, that's going to happen in the future when we start looking at free fall. Because if we're dropping an object in free fall, what's VI if I drop an object? And if I want to find how long it's going to take to hit the ground, I will use this version of the equation where VI is zero. It'll become a very, very common one. And then next year in physics 12, once you know how to solve a proper quadratic equation, I don't have to drop any objects anymore. Then I can launch them from cannons finally, which is way funner in my mind. Example 7, D equals VI plus VF all over 2 times T. I haven't done that much with this equation. What's it want me to get by itself? The T. Don't panic. I'm going to follow my rules. I guess the D is going to drop down like a domino. How will I move the 2 over? How will I move the T over? Oh, no, no. I want to leave the T where it is. I want to leave the T where it is. I want to leave the... How will I move the bracket over? What's the bracket doing to the T? Time zinc. So how will I move the bracket over? That's an equation for t. t equals 2d all over vi plus vf. This is the one that I saw a lot of people comparing with their neighbors. This is typically the one that generates a lot of discussion. But I hope now that I've done it, you're kind of going, oh, yeah, that's how it should work. Didn't do anything new. So it's going to be 2 times 2,400 divided by 5.5 plus 20. 2 times 2,400 Oh, brackets are on the top. Although I could probably get away without the top brackets in this case, but I definitely have to have brackets around the bottom. Times, Mr. Duick, plus 20. You get 188.23. I'm going to go 188. Yep. How many of you got that one right? I'm impressed because I didn't throw that one at you. That was I kept that one off all the homework on purpose, I think. So I don't think I gave you that one before. Uh, units, seconds. Number eight, same equation. Good yawn, Mila? Good stretch? Mila, what am I trying to get by itself? You walked right into that one. What am I trying to get by itself? Yeah. Where is it inside? The brackets? I'll save the brackets for last. Once again, the D drops down times the 2, divide the T. And that would give me VI plus VF. How would I get the VI by itself? I'll move the VF over. So I'm going to do this all in one step. And I'm going to put the VI equals right there. And so it's going to be 2 times 120 divided by 12 minus 24. Oh, I can do this in my head. It's 20 take away 24. Is it negative 4 even? I think. Yeah. You know what, Isabella? You don't have to. I'm going to go to two sig figs just to make it look like an official, official answer. But if you just wrote negative 4, I'm not going to freak out. And the units would be meters per second. Could you give yourself a lovely score, please, out of 16? If you need to lawyer with me, now is the time. Otherwise pass them inwards, the person in the middle puts them in a nice neat stack all facing the same way. If you're playing lesson five, acceleration and G's. If you drop a piece of paper and a bowling ball, if you're not in a vacuum, the bowling ball will thud to the ground and the paper will drift gently. But that's not how most of the universe works. Most of the universe is a vacuum. And so we say this, read along with me. Near the Earth, objects in a vacuum will all fall to the Earth with the same acceleration, regardless of their mass. In other words, a feather will fall, will accelerate at exactly the same rate as a bowling ball if we put them in a vacuum, if we remove air resistance. Put your pencils down, look up. Take your pencils up. So the first thing, Amy, I want you to realize is mass has no effect on how fast an object will fall. All that is affecting how fast an object will fall 
is the strength of the Earth's gravitational field. It's tugging on all objects, making them accelerate. We use a lowercase letter g to represent this gravitational field, g for gravity. And how big is it? 9.8 meters per second squared. You'll do a lab next class where you'll try and measure it. We'll be a bit off because we're doing it by hand, but we should be close. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If you want to, you can add a negative to make it down, but for now I'm going to say leave that off. I think I gave this to you on your green sheet. In fact, I think it's the first line underneath the four kinematics equations. Is it not? Okay. You will, trust me, Matt, end up memorizing this number because we're going to be using it like crazy for the rest of the year. But By the way, uh, white, what nice round number is that really close to if I'm trying to do math with in my head? If I'm standing in line in an amusement park and I'm trying to calculate how fast I'm going to be going at the bottom of the first roller coaster hill, and I think it just adds to things if you're doing that, I'll do, use 10 to do the math in my head. People talk about g-forces. It's not a force. They should be talking about g acceleration. And so, Josh, what you'll hear me for the rest of the year now, I will never say g-force. That's like fingernails on the blackboard to me. Force is newtons, and this is meters per second squared. I'll just talk about g's. How many g's? Okay. One g is exactly 9.8 or approximately 10 meters per second squared. 2 g's is exactly 19.6, or around 20. How big are 6 g's? Yeah, 6 times 9.8. 50, uh, 58.8. Uh, about 60. Now, if we're outside of a vacuum, and say I drop a piece of paper, it will not accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared down because air resistance is going to play a massive role. But the vast majority of the time, we're going to ignore air resistance. If you are experiencing 5 Gs, what that means, it's the equivalent of four of you dogpiling on yourself. Mr. Duick, you said 5 Gs. How come you said it's the equivalent of four of us dogpiling on myself? All of you are pulling 1 G right now at all times because you're on the earth. You pull 1 G naturally. That force, so if you lift your feet off the ground right now, all of you lift your feet off the ground, there is something pulling you down into the chair and you can feel it now with your body. That's 1 G. And you're used to it. You don't even notice it unless I specifically mention it. If you're pulling 3 Gs, it's like an extra two of you on top of yourself. Um, human beings can survive up to 25 Gs in most situations without dying, although typically anything over around 10 Gs, we're breaking bones or ribs or things like that. So typically anything after 10 is going to require a hospital visit. Anything above 25 is going to be really tough to survive. You can if you're in good shape, and it all depends on what angle you're absorbing the acceleration at. At Playland, the ride with the highest Gs is around 4. Which ride is that? If you sign up for Physics 12, we do a field trip in May. We go to Playland and we go on the rides with accelerometers and other instruments. And you can find out for yourself. Mr. Duick. Yeah, William. How do we know that 25? Turn the page. like to introduce you to one of my nerd heroes, Colonel John Stapp. In the 1950s, the U.S. Air Force was trying to do research on ejection seats for fighter pilots. In fact, at one point, they wanted to know, was it even worth putting an ejection seat into a jet airplane? Or would ejecting at twice the speed of sound automatically kill the pilot? In which case, it was better to not even give them the option, even if there's only a 1% chance that they can land their wounded plane on the ground, that was better than a 0% chance. And so there was discussions, maybe we shouldn't even put an ejection seat in the plane in the first place. Colonel John Stapp was a U.S. Air Force doctor, 
and he was put in charge of this research and he felt uncomfortable asking soldiers to volunteer so he volunteered himself for a large number of tests this is where most of our information about crash test dummies comes from comes from these tests this is where most of our information about how well human beings can survive g's comes from these tests so he rode a rocket sled that ran on a special track and he was subjected to 15 G's for 0.6 seconds and a peak of 22 G's during the photo that you see here. His record was on, uh, well, his rocket sled at one point was traveling at 0.9 times the speed of sound. We call that Mach 0.9. Mach 1 is one times the speed of sound. Mach 2 is twice the speed of sound. So he was going just below the speed of sound around 300 meters per second and he came to a stop in 0.68 meters uh, seconds 0.68 seconds in less than a second how many g's did he experience kai what's this question asking me to find how do i do that first of all i will ask you to find g's i find acceleration first so everybody go a equals question mark What's that 300? Yeah, I got that. What is that 300? I disagree. I don't think it's V final. I know what V final is. Connor, what's V final? Look up. What's V final? And by a process of elimination, then it must be. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you made that silly mistake because that's how I would have walked through it. I would have said, wait a minute, V final, because I w you would have come to the word stop and said, oh, that's got to be V final, and you would have corrected yourself and said V initial is 300. Is that okay? What's that 0.68? Connor, my friend. What's that 0.68? Yeah. I'm looking for an equation that has a VF, a VI, an A, and a T in it. There is one. Diego, which one? Could you have found that without Alex pointing it out to you? Yeah. I hope so. I'd like to think so. Next time, don't help him out. This is where it written. We've got to play with the big leagues now. Uh, Diego, you wasted my time. Get the A by itself. Yes, I know it's VF equals VI plus AT. Get the A by itself, my friend. I'll give you a hint. A equals... Yep. So we're going to get 0 minus 300 divided by 0 0.68. This is going to give us the acceleration. It will be a negative acceleration because he's most definitely slowing down. What do you get? This is one you might want to try on your calculator because it's a pretty impressive number. You get negative 441 point blah, negative 441. Now that is meters per second squared. This is an acceleration. How do I change an acceleration into g's? How big was 1g? Does anybody remember the number? So to find g's, I'm going to go the acceleration divided by 9.8. So I'm going to go negative 441 divided by 9.8. I'm going to go answer button divided by 9.8. Now here, the negative is just telling me slowing down. But how many Gs did he pull? That is the equivalent of having 44 of him dogpile on himself. The unit for Gs is actually just Gs. It's no units because it's meters per second squared divided by meters per second squared. The units cancel. So I just write the word, the word, the letter G with an apostrophe S next to it. Uh, he survived, but there was damage. He also, in another test, exposed his face to 940 kilometer per hour winds because, well, it doesn't, maybe if the pilots survive, but they lose their eyes and all the skin off their face, maybe we don't want them to, maybe pilots would prefer to try and land their wounded planes. These are questions we had to think about, we had to ask. I'm going to be showing you some videos of the tests. Put your pencils down.